we've got another interview with a expert and this time it is Janak Patel. Now he and his wife started off as personal trainers and now they are 100% online personal trainers. They travel the world and live what many people would call a, a dream lifestyle. They've lived in 67 cities and they basically use their coaching business to be able to fund and keep their lifestyle the way they want it. We've got some questions from PT Distinction members and we will fire them at Yannick and find out exactly how he is and some of the things he's learned along the way. So, hi Yannick. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on board and I hope it can be of some value to your, um, all your members. Sure you will be, sure you will. Um, right, so I'm just going to dive in. First question, if you had three things you wish you could tell yourself when starting out with your online business that you know now, what would they be? Okay, um, I suppose the first one would be I wish I started earlier to actually um, be on the lookout for these type of opportunities. Um, I got my first computer when in about 2002, 2003 when I was studying engineering and I wish somebody was out there to tell me to get into business for myself and introduce me to this internet thing and um, because uh, and that was the way of the future. I just wish I'd started earlier. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, number two would probably be um, to become, now that I've been in business for a while now, I think um, the number one th thing um, I wish somebody would have told me is to become an expert in sales and marketing. Um, I feel that, you know, as trainers, you know, we can become, you know, the, we can get all the qualifications, become the best trainer we can be. But unless we know how to market and sell ourselves, we can still end up broke. Um, I feel that sales and marketing is probably the key to it all. You can, um, you know, it's like the McDonald's theory, you know, uh, you know, can the, uh, the worst hamburger in the world, but they are still the biggest hamburger chain. <laughs> so um, you got to look at it that way because they have the most amazing marketing machine out there. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good point. And um, I, um, in my early days in business, I had a, had a mentor. Uh, and it's really well. Um, and one of the, my mentors told me he, he instilled a philosophy in um, in me, and um, he said, "Do the work once, get paid forever." <laughs> and I, like that. and um, I suppose we, as personal trainers, we're constantly out there. We're, we're stuck in the um, you know in a way like a time for money trap. Our income is limited by the number of clients we can actually fit into our schedule. And by um, using this philosophy early on, you know, my wife, she, uh, she started creating um, manuals in terms of the training manuals early on, okay, and that taught, and those manuals were used to actually teach other trainers how to train our clients. So in her first year of business, she actually um, she quit personal training and was now the overseer of dozens of trainers because we systematized our training. And we yeah. put them into a manual, right down to the details of like how we want you to even, what questions you need to ask our clients, how to even, what to say after the first session, to give them a call, what training we want you to do. And by documenting that, we created a system. And that way we could actually train other trainers to take on our clients. And that leveraged us, our, leveraged us that was, gave us the first, um, I suppose, um, first taste of leverage. Leveraging ourselves so we're not, you know, to escape this time for money training. Um, and that way, and that philosophy has helped us all the way through now to our business, what we have now, where we're actually, um, we make all our income from creating digital products, um, creating, and those are assets. And we're, we're been, you know, how many times do you have to write a, uh, read, uh, write a book? You know, once. How many times can you sell it? As many times as you want. Yeah. You know? um, say with PT Distinction, you know. How many times can you create that software? You know, you create, you've got overall framework once. How many yeah. members can you get on board? And that type of philosophy, you know, uh, needs to be instilled in a lot of trainers. I think, yeah, yeah, very good actually. Three, three nice points. I think, I think trainers miss out a lot, particularly on the marketing. They don't get it right. They focus on just being the very best trainer, which is important. But I think the marketing side and, and as you say, do work once, get paid multiple times is, is a very good point as well. All right, moving on. At what point in your online business did you take the step to go 100% online? It was actually a gradual process. Um, like I said, um, 
back in uh, when my wife started the business in 2005, we um, we were training one on one. Then we leveraged ourselves to train other um, with other hiring other uh, other trainers to train our clients. And then we started doing some marketing campaigns in national magazines, right? And then we started getting responses from other from all over the country, right? We started getting inquiries for, for our training stuff. So the next thing was to actually think about, hey, how can we leverage ourselves now, okay? And the next, the, the best solution was training these people online through email, through Skype, okay? And, but there was a problem in that too. You're still in a way, even though you've leveraged your time, you, you're not going out training these clients. You know, um, you know, you, you're still you're still training them online. It's still taking up your time. Yeah. So it, the problem came. We started realizing that when we started getting an inquiry, we're, we're sitting in New Zealand offering online services. Then we get a client from Australia who wanted who, who wanted to actually be trained, and then we got different time zones. So mm -hmm. now, how do you um, deal with that? So it's like, okay, now what's the next step of this? You know, evolution. And it was like, okay, um, 2008, 2009 started experimenting more with this internet stuff, online stuff. We started creating membership sites um, and um, started automating a lot of our program delivery, you know. Yeah. So 2010, um, you know, uh, we think uh, we, we got to a point where we um, <clears throat> where we thought, hey, let's, um, uh, you know, let's create this 100% online. It's still t at the same time, we still had some clients. And then eventually it got to the point where we we're thinking, you know, um, hey, we can run this business from with no no trainers anymore. Okay, we're making enough. Uh, we've replaced our income from this online business. Okay, and um, yeah, so around 2010, it took a bit of time. It's all a, you know, it's a big learning curve. Like everything that we learned way back when we were training clients has, has been applied to our online business nowadays. To actually how to keep clients accountable, how to keep them um, motivated. And um, all those um, teachings and learnings, you know, it's a gradual evolution over a period of time to 2010 where we actually went 100% online. Nice. So would you say by that point you were matching the income that you previously made with your face-to-face -face training or you were slightly ahead or...? We, um, 2010 we um, did a um, bit of a beta test. We, um, after we uh, uh, left all our trainers, went to the US for about three months, started running our business around, you know, offshore basically training a lot of clients in New Zealand, Australia. Yeah. And then we thought, hey, this is fantastic. We came back to New Zealand, let the lease of our office building run out, um, got rid of all our staff, and um, moved into and just started running our business from home. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> 2011, in one year, we expanded into 12 different countries because wow. of the expansion of, uh, you know, this is the leverage of this, you know, and, and that, that we we surpassed the income of um, of uh, you know of our full, uh, of of training clients, well surpassed it, and that gave us the freedom to just go, hey, let's just uh, buy a one way ticket to the US, and um, and it's been we've been travelling ever since. Fantastic. Later. Yeah, so um, it's just been um, uh, and that and the business now provides a cash flow, and to you know live this kind of lifestyle. Brilliant. Yeah, ideal really. Yeah. Right, next one. How many hours would you say you spend working a day now? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Tim, uh, you know, there's all this. Uh, one, one of the books that I um, read well early, the early one was probably um, Tim Ferriss' book, Four Hour Work Week. A lot of trainers may be familiar with it. And, um, <laughs> you know, in a way, it can be a bit of a, um, a false title, Four Hour Work Week. But at the same time, you know, uh, you know when you enjoy yourself you don't, uh, in your business, you know, you don't consider a lot of things work. Okay. So sometimes, you know, we arrive in a new country. You know, we, we go to we get to a new city every maybe uh, two to four weeks. We arrive in a new city, and we take a week off. You know, total we just be the tourist. Okay, and you know we did that most like twelve times a year, right? You know, yeah. oh, twelve different cities. Say, and um, and that and because we can, you know, because the business gives us the freedom to take the time off if we want to. But at the same time, you know, yeah. we'd be um, we you know we could actually work. Uh, 10, 12 hour days to um, create the next marketing campaign, to create the next asset or the book that we want to re release or the next yeah. fitness program, you know, and it depends. Like, but the thing is, when we work, we're creating assets, you know, yeah. and an asset is do the work once, get paid forever. Like mm -hmm. the programs that we created in 2010 are still paying us now five years later. Yeah, see, that's now, nice. See what I mean? So that's, you have to look at it and go, okay, I'm going to work three, um, three months solid straight. 
Yeah. And I'm going to create this software program or I'm going to create this book. I'm going to create this asset that's going to freaking pay me forever. And that's what, and, and so it varies, I could say, basically, you know, it depends how many hours we work, you know, on what yeah. we want. But the important thing is trying to do things that can leverage your time and yeah. your freedom. No, that sounds, sounds good. Um, this goes slightly hand in hand with it, but I, I think I now know the answer. When you were working to get to the position you're in now, how many hours roughly would you in a day, in a week? Yeah, it's about the same thing again. In the early days, it was all a learning curve. Like, yeah. You know, uh, when we were personal trainers, we were like, um, you know, obviously sometimes you know, we, uh, you know, we want to, we wanted to launch a website and all that. And, you know, we sometimes you're bootstrapping a lot of things. You know, uh, so sometimes there's a lot of things you have to. I had to for myself personally, uh, becoming from an engineering background. I, I was willing to learn a few things, you know. I'd, I would be willing to learn how to use Dreamweaver. I'd be willing to learn how to use Photoshop, and that saved us cash and actually building up, um, you know, instead of hiring a graphic designer or hiring someone to actually build a website, I could actually do that because I was actually willing to actually put in the time and effort to learn those things on my own. You know, go to library, pick up a book, and those things take time instead of just going out and paying ten thousand dollars for a website. No? So. In the start, everything is a learning curve, and those skills and all that still pay off. Pay me off. Um, pay off nowadays as well. So you have to be willing to do the uh, do the work in the early days. Yeah. And and the payoff is a lot uh, is huge in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it's a very important lesson for a lot of people to learn. I think is actually you've got to work very hard to start it all off, and then once it's going, you get you get the freedom lifestyle. Absolutely. No, that's right. Um, next, next question. What's your primary source or sources of, of getting new clients into your programs? Okay. What I've discovered is the more lead sources that you can master, the um, you know the more clients you can get. Yeah. Okay. But at the same time, you have to realise that as trainers, okay, if you're on the on the time for money type business model, there's only so many trainer clients you can actually fit into your into your schedule. Okay. <laughs> so being able to leverage our time through online. Um, uh, offering online fitness services, you know, that's opened up our world to actually look at all types of lead generation strategies. So the major ones that we're using right now for acquiring clients, uh, Facebook, which is massive. We are using Google Pay Per Click. Uh, we are also using Yahoo and Bing. And um, I'm currently um, experimenting at the moment because um, it depends on the package that we're offering. I'm using LinkedIn. Right. For um, using their pay-per-click services, how's that working? They're very expensive. Like about, you know, I think about you're looking at like three or four dollars a click. Wow. But, yeah. but the thing is, if you know how to tag, if you if you target them based on a program specifically designed for a professional, yeah. Say for example, you know, we discovered a niche way back. You know, um, you know, say for example, a professional such as cabin crew. You know, right. You know, you know, they're, they're these people have. Tons of you know they they've got weight issues you know cabin crews <laughs> so they are constantly coming to us anyway we designed a program for um, cabin crew you know and something like LinkedIn all that we can actually target a profession yeah. uh, and for that specific program anyway and uh, that's those are online media uh, offline we've seen um, uh, direct mail we uh, where we actually um, uh, will purchase a list. Right. Um, I will use. Um, we're using PR, mag uh, a lot of PR, and that's through. Um, Nalisha uh, writes for. It's been featured in like about fifty-seven different magazines, wow. uh, fitness magazines and stuff like that. So we get leads through um, offline strategies. Yeah. And um, the final one is um, uh, direct mail. And so, oh, so I suppose yeah. So we purchase a list, and we'll probably do a, um, do a straight direct mail campaign to them. And where? Best. Sorry. How would you how do you purchase a list for, for dialing? Say for example, um, in the US, right? Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Um, nothing. There's no such thing as privacy in the US. <laughs> if, if people are willing to sell you a list of um, buyers, of, say, or subscribers to, uh, I don't know, for example, Weight Watchers magazine, or right. you know. And um, you know you can you can do all sorts of advanced strategies now. If you can get a, acquire a list of phone numbers, you can 
upload those to Facebook. Yeah. And then um, target everybody who's on their list who's got those phone numbers on Facebook. And you can actually target them specifically. You can send those same people a direct mail. And you can do you know, use retargeting, for example, and nice. some advanced stuff. And you can actually retarget those people as well. You know, and uh, that's pretty some pretty cool stuff you can do. Yeah, that's very cool. That is very cool. I like that one. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit further, I think, for my own use. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right. Um, starting on on clients, how how long do you keep your average clients? Um, okay, average client anywhere between three and six months. Okay. Okay. Um, we but during that time, we have a very effective marketing funnel in place. Okay, we know exactly what our average lifetime um, you know average lifetime customer is valued at. We know um, directly when they come on board to our system that we're going to be so, trying to offer them a lot of other products and services along the way. And um, uh, and uh, so yeah, so there's an effective marketing uh, funnel put in yeah. place to actually try and keep these people on at least about six months. Nice, very nice. Yeah. And how would you offer them different products through email, or do you have other other methods? Um, like everybody is um, what I've discovered uh, nowadays is that um, you know there's multi every multi ways of communication communicating to people, right? People yeah. love. People, there are, you know, um, if you're familiar with the, there's a principle called um, VAC, which stands for visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, and those are the way that people may learn. And um, say, say visual, say that you can actually be doing targeting those people, you know, through, um, you know, that, that's where they actually watch you on a YouTube clip or a video. We'd be sending those, uh, sending them an email as well. We'd also send them a direct mail letter, depending, um, yeah, depending on what we're selling. So. You know, uh, we've got online channels as well as offline channels. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sounds sounds like a serious system you've got in place there. Yeah, it's taken a while to, um, you know, to figure it all out and put together. But like I said, you know, everybody, every trainer needs to be a serious student of marketing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, as you said, once once it's going, it's going, isn't it? So That's it's right. uh, Absolutely. You know, pretty automated and i got it down to a pretty fine style now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Right. Um, what sort of things, other than you know, offering new packages, how would you keep your online clients, and how how do you keep them motivated to to go through the program and to get great results? Okay. They, uh, when they join a program, they have an um, they have an uh, we have a couple of systems. Okay. If they join a program, they can hire an online coach. Okay, as an extra, and that's an extra value package. Okay. Right. But if they were to actually not hire a coach, okay, and just go on with the program, we have various strategies in place to actually um, try and keep clients motivated and accountable to their goals, you know, and that's all built into our online system, all right, yes. where we will, where, say for example, um, they will, uh, we we we'll probably put in, we put in a lot of things to actually keep clients accountable. Say for example, we'll tell them that hey, if they fill in their goals every week. They'll get more information on to do to do this. Um, we have things in place like um, which we learned from when we were personal trainers. We had this uh, when we were personal trainers. We had this thing that we had a disincentive scheme where clients would actually pay to a charity if they didn't reach their goal or they didn't, and uh, and they actually self-elect themselves. So those same principles that we learned way back and actually keeping clients accountable, we've actually incorporated them into our online programs as well. Yeah. And yeah, just little things like that to keep them accountable. Um, and the thing is, what we've learned is that if the client feels like they're getting a result, they'll stick to it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, yeah. So uh, and at the same time, they will um, they'll purchase more products from you. They'll buy your books. They'll be able to buy your DVDs. They'll they'll um, buy your other products and services. And yeah, as long as they get see that they're getting value and they're actually getting somewhere. That's great. No, I like that. There's some clever methods there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Back more to the sort of marketing side of things, getting getting new business in. You've got a lot of media attention. Yes. Other than your lifestyle, what what first brought that to you, or was it purely people were interested in your lifestyle? Okay, my my wife is a um, is a natural born hustler when it comes to media. She perfected a system for herself. Yeah, we 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 te we, te we teach this all, uh, all this in, in the uh, in our academy. We run for trainers, anyway. But um, she's protected the system for herself. And I suppose the number one thing is 
you have as trainers you you need to have the time to get out there and pick up the phone and contact these reporters right all right they these reporters are dying for stories okay they want something unique fresh and if you can somehow position yourself as where that we a trainer themselves can benefit the reader some sort of story angle you know and these reporters are readily available. You could you could um, you just look on your um, uh, your national news site or whatever, and you can see the reporter's name at the bottom of each article. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You can contact them. You know, find them on LinkedIn and contact them and start pitching them. You know, and you're not going to get everybody, but you know you. Uh, but see, the stuff that we did, like we appeared in the media, like um, you know, several years back, have have helped us now. Like people have just dis people are discovering uh, might might see that article now uh, that was posted two or three years ago yeah. and they see that now and they contact us and um, you know like right now we uh, I just finished an interview with Tim Ferriss on the on, six, on 60 minutes yeah me and Alicia uh, just appeared with him uh, 60 minutes if you don't know is a current affairs show in Australasia and um, and that's and that's PR as well you know and that's a way for other people to um, and that's something that we can actually use a credibility and um, uh, so that's a, you have to just get yourself out there, pick up the phone or email or, or whatever. And email these reporters with different story angles and how they can actually benefit their readers. So it's all about their readership. That's the secret to it. Nice. Very nice. So contact them direct and just stay yeah. with it. And pitch, pitch your ideas. Yeah. You've got to right. things and so not everybody, and not these reporters are busy. They're not going to get back to you all the time. But And if you just keep them contacting once a month, you know, with something new, you know, you're in the forefront of their mind, and they're like, "Oh, okay, I got a. Uh, they've been commissioned to write a story on something, and they will just they'll contact you." Nice, nice. That's that's great. Really simple. You sort of you think it's much more complicated than just picking up the phone, don't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that, that all starts. You have to start somewhere, you know. And like, you know, my wife, she's been in all these magazines and all that, and that sure that shows credibility as well. Yeah. Um, uh, for a fitness business, and um, uh, like, um, and also. Uh, and then eventually somebody will pick you up. Nice. Yeah. Like it. Um, all right, moving back to your, your lifestyle here. Would you say you've had to make any sacrifices to, to live the lifestyle that you do? I suppose um, we've been traveling for about over four, uh, over four years now. We've, been to, we've lived in over 25 different countries, maybe uh, 67 cities across the world. It's been an adventure, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I suppose a lot of people would actually think, oh, you know, you've been away from home for so long. You know, do you miss your family and friends? But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I suppose Facebook, Skype, that all, um, you know, that plays a part. That's it. You can, people, you can see, you can contact mum, can, can contact mum and dad just, to, you know, immediately. They're available. I suppose one you can't get away from them anyway, can you? Yeah, exactly. And... Um, I suppose the uh, major drawback is, if, I suppose, you can get attached to a, a place as well. You know, you stay there for one month and yeah. uh, you might get to know the locals. We just came from Greece and we, um, you know, last month we were eating baklava nice. and uh, spinach pies. This month <laughs> we're in Berlin and we're eating sausages. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, you know, uh, those things, I suppose, when you... Uh, you know, uh, you think about it and you think, oh, you know, I'm going to be leaving this place. You're never going to come, you're probably step foot in that in that city again. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's just a fact of actually moving on, I suppose. Yeah. Um, in terms of sacrifices, uh, not really. You know, we've just been having a bit of great time, though. Eh? I'm looking why my favourite person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, do you do you spend just one month in each place and then move on? Anywhere between two weeks to one month, maybe two weeks to six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Nice life. Yeah. And we, just, uh, move on. we just decide on the fly. Sometimes we we'll, we we'll, we'll plan it out in advance. Sometimes it, right now we're starting you know, on Portugal or uh, yeah. Lyon in France or um, Dublin. So uh, I think the next few days. The choices you have to make in life, eh? Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, all right, I'm going to go on to your book. How hard is it to get your book published? Okay. Um, and then how hard is it to actually sell copies of it? Okay. Um, let's look at um, yeah. uh, Fitness Evolution. My book, uh, Fitness Evolution, Evolution Brain has got the uh, profit, success, and lifestyle. So, so that's self published. Right. Okay. 
to self-publish a book, uh, we didn't, uh, is, is pretty easy. Okay, yeah. it's, um, so basically, uh, the idea is now that once you self-publish, you can use um, you can use all sorts of. It's actually easier to actually do um, self-publish a book than obviously finding a publisher. And the fact is, you can also keep keep one hundred percent of the royalties or the profits for yourself. Yeah. Um, nowadays, yeah, you don't have to um, keep any inventory. You know, gone with the days that you have to order five hundred copies of your book and keep them in your garage until they're sold. Yeah. Nothing is, um, uh, everything is on um, publish on demand nowadays. Uh, we teach all this in our um, uh, in the uh, in the fitness academy that I've created for trainers, um, how to actually um, uh, publish a book for yourself using these um, publish on demand services, and we also show how to actually sell it as well. Um, and you know, selling the book is like using these general the same principles I used before. You know how we, how we get, acquire clients as well. You know, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, Bing. LinkedIn, you know, those are the same avenues that we use for our training clients to actually sell these books. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and also um, you can um, online, you can um, use all sorts of distribution channels. You know, uh, you can automatically get your book put into every public library in America for free. You can um, you can get your um, book uh, easily put into. Um, you know, distributed all over Amazon, so all over using their distribution channels, and they handle everything for you. It's it's um it's for someone to publish a book. You know, um, yeah, you just have to put in the effort, but put in the effort and actually write it. <laughs> and now, yeah. yeah, you can get it on Word, on a Word document, and um, you know, slap the cover on it. <laughs> there you go, job done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's nice and easy. How did you uh, how did you get it into all the libraries in America? Well, it's part of it, um, you know, once you get an, um, uh, once you publish your book, um, uh, once you create an ISBN number, that's one of the rules that you can actually, um, uh, you can actually um, get it into public libraries, in the public library system. Yeah. That's part of the rules that, hey, and um, Amazon even, um, when you actually uh, advertise it on Amazon, it actually gives you the option if you want to actually do that stuff. That's wicked. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you, you mentioned it. Your your new training academy, or newish training academy. This is for personal trainers, basically teaching them how you do what you do and all of your systems. Yes, absolutely. Um, we when we started, um, uh, when the media took an attention on, uh, got a got, um, started get, taking an interest in our lifestyle. We started getting a lot of trainers calling us, emailing us, going, "How do we do the same as you? How do you? How do we?" create an online business or um, how do we sell digital products or, you know, um, and um, hey, we just thought, geez, um, there's a lot of trainers out there who, who want that type of help. So, you know, we thought, well, hey, well, let's capitalize on it. Trainers want this help, so let's design a course. Let's show them everything that we do in our own business, okay, right from how to create the framework to create products, how the framework to actually launch it online and the framework to even, you know, how to advertise their products, exactly what we're doing. Basically, everything we're doing without all the mistakes we've made over the last 10 years. All uh, jam-packed into a 12 to 16-week course, and we decided to actually build something like that for trainers. Yeah. And we call it um, Digital Fitness Academy. Nice. Um, if, you get, if, tra if, you're, if your members want to check it out, it's digitalfitnessacademy.com, and they can check it out if they want. But uh, um, uh, alternatively, you know, uh, you know, uh, it also got me to, um, to actually um, create a book um, called uh, Fitness Evolution, uh, Personal Trainer's Guide to Ultimate Profit, Success and Lifestyle. And hey, all your yeah. members are free to actually um, grab themselves a free copy, okay? Yeah, that'd and, be brilliant. Thank you. And I'll give you a link um, uh, if you want. Um, they, they can actually um, go there, go to the website directly and grab themselves if, if, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll stick it on the blog under underneath the video. Yeah, cool. They have to... Uh, uh, um, obviously, if they can help me out with the shipping cost, it's only a little. Min um, I think in the UK, are all your members from the UK? No, we've got UK, America, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. Yeah. And okay, and we, we shot it around we yeah. worldwide. Okay, and <laughs> the benefit of um, self-publishing, you know, and using the publish-on-demand service, so we can go, we can send it out to anywhere in the world, and. Um, 
Uh, so yes, yeah, so um, I think it's only like about five quid, five pound um, to actually um, uh, for all your members in the UK. I think it's like eight dollars in the US as well for shipping, and uh, send you out a free copy to all your members out there. Yeah. Thanks very much. I will uh, get that link up and make sure everyone can get their copy. Fantastic. Hey, thanks very much for that. Pleasure. Well, thank you very much for the interview and uh, sharing some of your secrets with us. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, if you, um, yeah, so if you, if, if any of your um, uh, members want to have any other questions or anything like that, um, hey, uh, let them know. Feel free to email through, and cool. um, I'm happy to actually help out. I'm always happy to help out other fitness professionals. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I can I put your email address uh, on a link as well? Um, if I give you uh, access to a form. Okay. Great. Yep. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks very much. Cheers, Janet. Cheers, Janet. Bye. 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 Cool.